Live from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering AWS Summit 2016. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are live in Santa Clara, California at AWS Santa Clara, AWS Summit, one of many of the shows. They go all over the country and actually all over the world to get out to the people and these little tiny mini events have grown into 4,000 people, which for a lot of events is a pretty sizable number. So the whole ecosystem is here. Great keynote from Dr. Matt Wood. A relentless pace of innovation, which we've known Amazon for and continue to know. As I always like to say, never bet against Bezos because the guy just keeps moving the ball down the field. So we're excited, we're getting towards the end of the day. Uh, Lisa Martin is joining us, great to see you again, Lisa. You too. And our next guest, Ashvin Vishwanath, Director of Product Marketing for Talent, welcome. Thanks a lot. Absolutely. Happy to be here. So for the folks that aren't familiar with Talon, give them kind of the uh, kind of the 911. Sure thing. Or 411, excuse me. It's not an emergency. <laughs> 411. Although if you have any big data problems, you might want to call. There us, you go. Sure. Good Who to you know. Get a call. So yeah, I mean, Talon, we are an open source data integration company. Uh, we started back in 2006. Uh, started off in France. Uh, we have uh, our, a lot of our R&D located in Europe. A lot of our um, executives are based here in Silicon Valley in uh, Redwood City. And uh, we really are one of the leaders when it comes to uh, big data integration. And uh, now we're also making a name for us uh, in terms of cloud integration as well. So that's why we're here at AWS Summit. So I love that because the Cube, you know, we, we go to all the shows, we're covering all the big trends, you know, cloud's a big one, we've been covering big data for years and years and years. And what's interesting to me, and, and, and uh, Dr. Wood talked a lot about it in the keynote, is the impact that cloud is having on big data. A huge impact in the way that big data is executed, the way you can collect data, share data, and, and analyze data. You guys are right on the cutting edge of that trend. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, we recently got elevated to an advanced big data partner within AWS, and we really have focused on AWS as a very, very strategic cloud ecosystem, specifically because we see cloud as a catalyst uh, for big data growing to beyond what it is today. And a lot of the key uh, aspects of big data happen to really fall on EMR, Redshift, and some of the other services within AWS uh, that we see growing. And as you look down the road, what are some of the things that you see the cloud big data, you know, cloud enabled big data can do that we couldn't do before? So really it comes down to how cloud can help a lot of your big data workloads scale. Because cloud is at the end of the day, uh, it's a pretty cost effective uh, way to process data, to host your applications, or whatever else. And Amazon has made it uh, uh, really cheap for you to run proof of concepts, uh, to do data warehousing workloads, uh, to run uh, Spark workloads, what have you. And as an integration vendor, we want to help accelerate that process for customers as well. So what we think is that as time goes on, as more and more companies uh, see the power of cloud to scale up their big data workloads, we'll see big data projects proliferate within the rest of the organization. Right. One of the things that I found interesting about, and the keynote, and Jeff, you mentioned Dr. Wood's keynote that happened this morning was one of the taglines that I like that he says, friends don't let friends build data centers. But <laughs> looking into the future, one of the things that he was talking about was in the future, a lot of organizations aren't going to run their own data centers. We just talked with, a, with a Corp Info about data, complete data center migration. Looking at big data, what that enables customers to do, become data driven. It allows them to do powerful analytics, really get a 360 degree view of their business, their customer's business, and, and also proliferate this across the company. When we look at, at that impact that big data is having on cloud, talk to us about some of the trends that Talend is seeing in that, the big data cloud space, as well as with respect to uh, cloud data warehousing. So the interesting thing about cloud data warehousing is that we're seeing a lot of customers that want to move off of legacy uh, on-premises data warehouses to a cloud-enabled data warehouse. I mean, I mean, as you heard in today's keynote, you know, friends don't let friends build their own data centers. And a lot of these lega data, legacy data warehouses are actually housed in these data centers. It takes, uh, it's really expensive, it takes a long time to provision. Uh, these data warehousing projects can take months and months, if not years. And by the time they're actually ready to go, uh, you're already looking in the rear view mirror and uh, whatever analytics you wanted to get out of your project, it's just uh, flown by. 
So cloud data warehousing really is a way to get your analytics workloads quickly deployed in the cloud so that you have the insights you need to predict not only what your customers are looking for in the near future, but also longer term. So the first couple of trends we're seeing uh, amongst uh, our customer base anyway is the trend to move from on-premises legacy data warehouses uh, to a cloud data warehouse. Now of course, this process is not going to be uh, overnight uh, because a lot of this historical data has been accumulated over the past years, if not decades. And so what we're seeing is really a hybrid scenario where a subset of the data from these historical data warehouses are moved into a cloud data warehouse for a specific project. And as time goes on, more and more of that data is shifted over to the cloud. So maybe transitioning to a hybrid cloud infrastructure before a complete shift to public yes, cloud? Yes, absolutely. So you may have a legacy data warehouse and then you may want to spin up a cloud data warehouse such as Amazon Redshift, for instance. And uh, you may want to use some of that data within Amazon Redshift for some next generation analytical uh, initiatives. And as time goes on, you'll see more and more data uh, move over and completely migrated over from that legacy data warehouse. Right. The other big issue, besides just scaling the workloads, is another thing that was touched on in the keynote, I want to get your feedback on. You know, Dr. Wood said very specifically, you, know, you have more data to more users to, that could put more analytics on it, and the net result is better business value, more features. Are you seeing, you know, is it, it, kind of the knock on traditional BI is it was, you know, the hallowed halls of the data scientists, and not that many people had access to the data, not that many people had the tools, the knowledge, the skills to manipulate the data. Where now this is whole kind of democratization of the data, where lots of people can have access, many people can start to apply some analytics to get the value spread out beyond just the data scientist uh, down the hall. Are you seeing that trend within your customers? I mean, absolutely. I mean, uh, we always urge our customers to be data driven. And what that means is, don't just wait for central IT to come to you with some of these newer data initiatives. The lines of businesses today are the ones that are actually driving a lot of these next generation analytics initiatives forward. Uh, the best example is really uh, take a look at any marketing department today. Uh, any marketing department has always been asked to uh, give more insights about their existing customers, their existing leads. Uh, their prospective customers, and they're integrating a ton of different data sources from their marketing automation systems to their social media systems. Uh, but these systems cannot just operate in silos. They also need to be commingled with data from legacy data warehouses where you have information such as pricing SKUs, uh, product SKUs, whatever else. And so uh, basically a lot of the analysts uh, within these lines of businesses have a much greater propensity to uh, get the insights that they need to drive their specific line of business initiatives forward. And because of the fact that analysts are a lot uh, bigger in number when compared to just central IT, we find that a lot of these initiatives are being driven by the line of business and now that democratization that you talked about is indeed happening. What are some of the challenges that you're seeing organizations are needing to get around when these initiatives are coming into play. If we look at, at the drivers, and we talked about this a number of times today, this buying decision making power shifting from IT to lines of business to the C-suite, and you've just kind of articulated the same thing. What are some of the technical challenges that you're helping customers to overcome when they're looking at going from uh, an on-prem cloud data warehouse through the hybrid cloud to, to AWS? So some of the biggest technical challenges are that a lot of these legacy data warehouses, they've accumulated historical data you know, for the past years or even decades, and there's just a lot of legacy stored procedures and legacy schemas that are not really easily adaptable to today's pace of data. So the challenge really is migrating some of that data to a cloud data warehouse, understanding the new schemas, and making sure that a line of business analysts can use that data in their own day-to-day -day, uh, work. So that really is the challenge, and that's where an integration vendor like ourselves, Talon, uh, come to really ease that process through so that they can get those analytics projects deployed a lot quicker. Yeah, because the more they can use, the more insights they get, right? Exactly. Yeah. All right, so I'll give you the last word. Um, what do you think of the show, the, kind of the buzz here? You said you've been at reInvent like three or four times. <laughs> How's this compare, and then what are we going to be talking about when we, uh, when we see you at reInvent later in the fall? 
I mean, uh, reInvent is obviously the centerpiece of uh, Amazon. Every year it just gets bigger and better. I remember uh, when I, my, the first reInvent I went to uh, in 2013, um, I was able to get a hotel room relatively quickly. The next year itself, I mean, I wasn't able to get a hotel room near the show at all. So it just shows you the power of, of Amazon and how the power of cloud has just uh, gone on um, to practically every organization uh, in IT. Uh, we think these summits are a great way to really get the word out uh, to a lot of different localities. And Silicon Valley being the center of all tech, it's great to see the same buzz that you see at reInvent uh, also here uh, in Silicon Valley. Right. Well, good advice from Ashwin. If you haven't registered, register. They're expecting close to 30,000 people, I think, and you'll be definitely sleeping at Circus Circus if you don't book your room <laughs> earlier, or the stratosphere even further down the strip, and I've made that walk before. So, Ashwin, thanks for, uh, for stopping by and spending a few minutes with it. Really appreciate the time. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'm Jeff Frick, she's Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE. We're here at AWS Summit Santa Clara. We'll be back after this short break. Thanks for watching.